Happy Wednesday, everyone. This is October 16th. Many areas across the lower 48 woke up this morning with a pretty chilly air mass, especially for these areas that are highlighted in the green and purple and much of the blue areas. You saw temperatures well below average across much of the areas across the central and southern plains, much of the Ohio Valley getting into the northeast and even sinking as far south as well as in the southeast and even portions of the panhandle of Florida had some pretty chilly air this morning and it promises to be even colder as we head into tomorrow morning. So in fact, look at the latest hazard map for the middle of October and all these areas that are highlighted in purple, that is your freeze warning taking place in Milwaukee, back into Chicago. Much of Missouri is gonna be seeing a freeze overnight tonight. And we should see a freeze in far northern areas of even Oklahoma. And these areas that are highlighted in blue, that is your frost advisory. So yes, I'm talking to you like Oklahoma City, the Tulsa region, even portions of Northern Alabama getting into Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, it's a pretty chilly air mass for October standards. And that's really compliments of this jet stream that just takes a nosedive further south. And the further south it buckles, that brings down that cooler air from Canada and sinks it all the way down into Florida. So you're gonna be feeling it in a big way. And many of you have felt it um, across the lower 48 this morning. And more of you are going to be feeling it tomorrow morning with the coldest temperatures so far since the month of April. So it's been a while since many areas actually seen this kind of chilly air mass, but it's bone dry, folks, back behind it. And one of the reasons why we're cooling off in such a big way is just that cold canadian air it's almost like arctic air for october standards the driest air and that's high pressure folks we're talking perfect radiational cooling taking place tonight with high pressure overhead very light if not no wind at all and just a very bone dry air mass will allow all those temperatures to sink to the surface and that's where you're going to feel it and that's why we do have the freeze warnings and some of those frost advisories in place for the middle of October. And look at the dew points. It's kind of unheard of. I mean, you're talking the entire almost lower 48 dew points in the 20s and 30s. That'll tell you how dry the air mass is out there back behind this cooler shot of air. It's just really the far outskirts of the coastal regions have any moisture to work with whatsoever. Other than that, it's pretty dry across the lower 48 back behind these fronts. And there is the colder air mass that will sink further south tonight. Yeah, we're talking even to the Houston area, San Antonio, the Austin area, much of Louisiana, back into Mississippi, Alabama, much of Florida is going to get into the action. We're talking 40s and 50s for you. And yes, much of the Carolinas is going to be chilly this tomorrow morning, all the way up into New England and even portions of the central U.S. Now, we are going to start cooling off across the West because we are going to be looking at another fairly significant trough that's going to be diving down for them. So they've been in an extended heat wave for a long time, and you're finally going to get a reprieve, and that reprieve is going to come in the form of much colder air, and we're even talking some snow into some of the higher elevations of the, some of the mountain regions back into Montana, Idaho, even portions of like say Flagstaff, Arizona will likely see some snow starting to fly as we head into Thursday and Friday. But there's the really dip in the jet stream that's out west. So we'll start to modify at least a little bit out here across the southeast, much of the southern plains. Fair, still very comfortable for October. But there's your dip across the West. And so now you're not gonna be left out. You're also gonna be included in this colder shot of air that's coming. Uh, and with that buckle in the jet stream, that's also gonna bring down a little bit more moisture to work with. So yes, we're talking some snow is gonna start to fly again back into Idaho. You're talking areas of Montana, especially into Wyoming, good chunk of Utah. And eventually that's going to shift over into Colorado and then further south, eventually into Arizona. So some of that higher elevation, 7,000 feet up there in uh, Flagstaff, 
we'll start to see the snow flurries and eventually some light snow start to fall across that region. It's all complements of another extended low pressure center. And this is going to have a pretty you know, deepening low. It's going to take a while to get the moisture return from this because of the drier air mass that's you know, before this. But nonetheless, we are going to be able to bubble up and kind of juice up the atmosphere a little bit. And that should ring out the snow and the higher elevations and actually some beneficial rains across Arizona, Utah and much of New Mexico, but also in the extended just crazy heat spell there that took place in Phoenix for pretty much all summer long. You're finally going to be cooling off out there in, into into that neck of the woods. And yes, if you live above 5000 feet, expect to see sub snow starting to fall on some of those mountain ranges as the moisture supply in some of the Gulf of Mexico will start to open up again. I mean, it's very kind of soupy mass, you know, air mass down there in the Caribbean, which is typical for this time of year. We're going to start feeding off a little bit of that moisture supply, and that's going to bleed into areas of far west Texas, into areas of New Mexico, and eventually eastern Colorado. And then the western regions of Colorado will be cold enough to snow, and that's where all the mountains lie. And then that will go into areas of Utah. And then there's the snow that could take place into Flagstaff as we head into Friday, possibly Saturday coming up this weekend. And there's the cooler shot of air, right? I mean, this is a pretty compacted low pressure right around the Four Corners regions underneath that. That's where you're seeing those 20 and 30 degree below average temperatures. I mean, you're going to be hard pressed to even get out of the 30s there in Flagstaff on Saturday. The cooler shot of air starts to modify, right? It's not going to be nearly as cold as what you've been experiencing this morning and then tomorrow morning heading into Friday. So for this weekend across the southeast, that air mass will still feel pretty pleasant, but it's not going to be nearly as cold as it was or has, you know, going to be this morning and tomorrow morning, but much of the central US is going to start warming up with that ridge of high pressure. And we almost kind of create more of a, another kind of a, a mega blocking pattern, at least for a little short term uh, going into the weekend. And that's gonna bring that moisture supply where you have that upper level low across the four corners regions start to shift over into West Texas, Western Oklahoma, Western Kansas area. That's going to bring back a little bit of moisture, not crazy ample amounts because the dew points are still fairly low across this region. We're talking in the upper 50s. So it's enough to wring out the precipitation, but not enough to really produce severe storms out of that uh, region, which is a good thing. But, you know, this is second season. This is typically when we're talking about severe weather and we really just haven't had much because the dynamics haven't been there. It's just been kind of really dry and uh, really just abnormal technically for October standards. But we are going to see subtle aspects start to return, you know, across the, you know, the, the dry line here into western Oklahoma, western areas of Kansas, while much of the southeast will continue to remain on the drier side going forward, really for the foreseeable future. It's the only game in town next week heading into Monday is this upper level low that will come out of the Four Corners regions. This is the culprit that could bring the showers and thunderstorms, possibly maybe borderline severe. I don't think anything gets too out of control here back into Nebraska by then. Uh, that's where most of the precipitation will be across the lower 48 heading into Monday because we're still talking about some pretty dry air contending with much of the lower 48. It's just within this area of low pressure, we're going to have enough moisture to kind of wring out that atmosphere you know, across that region. But overall, even in the next week, unfortunately, we won't be talking about cool downs anymore. We'll be talking about it warming up in a big way. So you get the shot of cold air across the central and eastern two thirds of the US. Now through modifying into the weekend, you got the reinforcing shot that comes in off the west coast, start, you know, heading into late in the week, heading into the weekend. But by the time we go into the middle of next week, 
much of the lower 48 returns with those that that uh, the, the heat or warmth for this October standards with 10, 15, some places almost 20 degrees above average. So you do start to warm up in a big way. So now we're, we'll turn to the tropics because we still have hurricane season. We're tracking two systems. We've been tracking these for a while and it's still the National Hurricane Center doesn't have much with this 40 50 percent at times you can definitely see here's the area of convection that we've been tracking here doesn't really look too you know out of, out of control here and uh, just a con conglomerate of showers and thunderstorms but like we mentioned with a weaker system it continues to track just due west right and uh this week we've got cold fronts right we've got cold fronts bringing it down and the keeping it down there into the caribbean but uh you see next week where you don't really have that much colder air coming in. So this is gonna to continue to track westbounds. Of course, we've got a lot of mountains to play with. We've got uh, Puerto Rico, we've got Dominican Republic, we've got Jamaica here, got into Cuba. So yeah, it's not very bullish on this system. Some take it to a tropical storm. There were some models that take it to a hurricane, but again, we've got a lot of landmass or you know, just a lot of terrain, the mountain ranges to contend with here but it is expected to continue to remain on the weaker side at least for now but right now this area down here in the far outskirts of the western caribbean down there in central america has you can see the flare-up of thunderstorms right this is just just your central american gyra type atmosphere that most some of these storms have come out of and we could be looking at possibly another storm again. So well, that's another area that, you know, they have about a 30% probability of something forming. And if you look at some of the ensemble guidance, uh, what we're talking about, yeah, it continues to remain weak, right? It's just like 1,011 millibar right now, continues on that west track, con continuing even three days from now, really not picking up too much intensity. It kind of shows it maybe maybe tries to form into a tropical storm by, by day five. Uh, but it'll be somewhere in the vicinity of the Dominican Republic down here portions of uh, Jamaica. So we'll be watching this because, you know, as it lags further and, uh, you know, we won't have much cold fronts coming in from the United States next week. This will get back into the Western Caribbean. So it's always something to monitor, but we are a long ways off before it actually starts to impact uh, land masses. And uh, the overall ensemble guidance has fairly bullish just on a tropical depression front not too much of a tropical storm so again that's why the national hurricane center only has these at 30 to 40 percent levels right now because they're not going to you know form anytime soon if they even do so we have a long time to watch these systems you know out in the tropics with about six weeks to go into hurricane season so guys i appreciate you guys watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why i protect you before and after storm.